you notice that every time there are some topics we repeat in our training. And the reason why we repeat those things in our training is because we believe they're really, really important. Two things I would like to talk about. One is the basics of our business. What, that, what really makes our business grow? The second thing I would like to talk about is persistence. And I think this is what, where really uh, most people have the biggest challenge in building this business. So if you permit me, I want to share the screen with you. Sorry. Um, uh, one moment, please. Okay, so uh, I want to go through the basic things of what our business actually is. If you notice, when you start the business, you start at just one person, or let me say um, a couple. That's how you start the business. For example, Betty and I started in 1996, just the two of us. Uh, at the moment, I think the last time I checked, our group, the number of people who joined our group is more than 42,000. How does our business grow? And I've, I've used here a very simple example to demonstrate the power of our business. Remember, the, the key of our business is very many people doing a little each. And that, is that makes it possible for the ordinary person in the street Somebody who is even just starting off in life can build a huge business because it is within the reach of, a simple, of anybody who is serious about building a better life. For example, let me use four, four, four examples of how, or a four month period of how this business can grow. In our marketing plan, we recommend that one person should do at least 100 PV, that is, the products they use and the product they retail to your customers. For those of you who are guests, one PV, a PV is a measure of our business size. For example, in money terms, one PV is about $1.60. So in Kenya, it may be different, Tanzania different, Nigeria, South Africa, it's slightly different because of the exchange rate and because of the VAT amount in each country is different. So. We measure the size of our business using PV because our business operates in 50 different countries and we need to standardize the measurement of business. Let me say I start the business this month of April and I recruit six people to do what I do. So there'll be six, people, six new people plus myself is seven. If each person is doing 100 PV, that's 700 PV. Now, the next month, if those seven people recruit three people each, there'll be 21 new people who joined the business, plus the people who were there the previous month, that gives you 28 people. If those 28 people do 100 points each, your business is generating 2,800 PV. If the third month, the 28 people recruit three people each, you will have 84 new people in your organization, plus the 28 who are there is 112 people. So you can actually build a business of having 112 people within four months if there's consistency in doing the business. If 112 people join the business and each person is doing 100 PV, that's 11,200 PV and that is a Sapphire Directive business volume. In the fourth month, if 112 people recruit three people each, you will have 336 people in the business, new people. Plus the 84 who are there the previous month, you have 420 people. If each person is doing 100 PV, your volume is 42,000 PV in a month. That's a, three, a two ruby director volume and your income is about, I would say $3,000 a month if you build the structure correctly, okay? In real life, it doesn't happen like that. But I, I made this example to give you an idea of why it's very important to build a team in the business. Your income actually comes from building a team of people who, who use and retail products. But let's get to how we build our business. Remember, our goal is to move products from near life to different users. 
either yourselves or your customers. How do we do this? We make use of three natural principles of three principles of nature. That is sowing and reaping. If you sow, you will reap. If you don't sow, you will not reap. And what is sowing in our business? Talking to people. Number two, the principle of increasing returns. If you sow one seed, you don't harvest one. You harvest a whole bushel, a hundredfold. That's a very simple concept that every farmer knows. And that's a, also a, a very simple concept that every parent knows by nature. I mean, uh, Betty and I started together 30 years ago. Now we have four children. Our eldest son is married and God willing, he'll also have children. That is called the principle of increasing returns. And then the last one is delayed gratification. And this is where persistence comes in. Delayed gratification means you wait for a whole growing season for your harvest to come home. Now, what are the practical things we do to actually make this happen? Number one, we need to focus on our daily success habits. And what is that? Using the products. Number two, sharing the business. How do you share the business? The first thing is you need a list of people, a list of people that you know, a hundred or more. Okay. But what do you do with this list? And three rules about name list. Number one, you need to write the names down. Number two, do not prejudge. And number three, talk to those people. It is not your responsibility to, for you to make them decide. Your responsibility is to show the business and let them decide themselves. Because when you push people to join the business, you have to push them to do the business. And it doesn't work like that. The next thing to share the business, you need to learn how to invite. How do you do this? Ask the right questions and listen to people. One of, the big, one of the most difficult things to learn and actually implement is learning to listen. The other thing you need to learn how to do is to show the business plan. And before I go to showing the business, one of the most important skills you're going to develop in this business is how to invite. You need to learn how to invite professionally. Why is that important? Because that is a key or that is a window that brings people to look at our business. It's like when you have a shop, if your shop is not well placed, if your shop is not clean, if your shop does not invite people properly, very few customers will walk into your shop. And inviting is the window that invites people to see our business. So learn how to invite professionally, okay? Right, ask the right questions, listen to what your prospects are saying, ask them to see the business without you explaining too much about the business so that they can get a full idea of how the business works. And then showing the plan, showing the plan simply means you explain to your, your prospects how the business works. This is easier than inviting because somebody more proficient in explaining the business normally does the presentation. That's why it's more important to be skilled in inviting than showing the plan, okay? And then the last thing is you need to know how to do the follow-up. That is when somebody has seen the business, you need to follow up with them so that they make a decision to join the business or not. And follow-up involves asking four very basic, simple questions. Number one, does the business make sense? Number two, do you see yourself, uh, sorry, does the business make sense is the first question. The second question is, what did you like most about the business? Number three, would you like to get involved or do you see yourself getting involved in our business? And the last question is, when do you want to get started in the business? Those are very important uh, follow-up questions that you need to ask your prospects to make a decision. And then the last thing is we need to learn how to retail products. Retailing products simply means sharing our experience about the product with our customers, listening to the customer's needs, and so that you can match our products with the customer's need. I find that the, the most loyal customers are customers that you treat very well. You give them enough information to make a decision and you follow up with them after they have used the products and they give you a feedback.
In other words, I'm saying develop some level of friendship with your customers. Let your customers know uh, about you. Let your know about your customers' birthdays, your customers' needs in the home, so that when they think about use, is buying anything, they think about you. And the last thing about building our business is personal development. I cannot overemphasize personal development, especially in these times. You know, I speak to a lot of people, sometimes by Facebook, sometimes by phone, sometimes by WhatsApp, sometimes by Zoom. People are going through a very tough times. A, a number of people are depressed and you need to protect your own mind through reading good books, listening to good CDs and audio tapes and YouTube videos to keep your mind positive. Because remember, people are looking for positive information to make meaning of their lives, okay? I was speaking to a friend of mine who has got, uh, he's, uh, he's diabetic, and he's actually frightened from living, frightened for leaving his uh, uh, leaving his house because one of the challenges that people who get uh, COVID nineteen is if you have these pre preconditions. And so he's quite afraid to leave his house. So one of the things you need to do for your prospects or your friends or your or your customers, keep in touch with them help them to look at life in a different manner because we need positive information daily to be able to sustain what we are going through at the moment. And then write down your weekly plan to implement. The last thing I want to discuss with you is persistence. Um, one of the things about building genuine friendship is persistence in speaking to your prospects, speaking to your friends and speaking to your relatives. It's very important to be persistent in building genuine friendship. But in our business, what is persistence? Persistence is sustained effort towards a goal. And that means if you want to be persistent, you need to have a goal that you're working towards. Three things are important for persistence. You need to ask, you need to believe, and you need to receive. These three basic things are very important in developing persistence because you see, sometimes we want to achieve goals in life, but we expect that something miraculous will happen. Something miraculous will happen if you have persistence. Okay. Um, I was reading this morning about, uh, there's a, a series of book called uh, Chicken Soup for Souls. Probably some of you have read these books. One of the authors is called uh, Mr. Canfield. Um, and when he was, they were, he came together with a few uh, authors, Chicken Soup for Souls is a series of very short and inspiring stories in different fields about people who survived cancer, people who survived uh, uh, abuse, people who have survived uh, losing everything in their lives. So it's a series of stories that are very inspiring. So when they were thinking about writing these stories, they went to different uh, publishers to publish their books. I was actually surprised that they went to 144 publishers who rejected these books because they said, these books, you'll never, you'll never even sell a, a thousand copies of these books. So the 145th publisher agreed to actually just read the manuscript. He didn't say, I'm not, I'm not promising that I'm going to publish a book, but give me the book to read. Let me see what it is. So they gave it to this publisher. The publisher read the books and told them, I think you won't be able to sell more than 20,000 copies. He said, okay, just publish the books. So this one publisher published those books and the goal of the writers, of the authors of the book had a goal of send, selling 1.5 million copies in 15 months. As at the last recording that I, I had, they had sold 115 million copies of the book with a gross revenue of $1 billion. And what was the key to their success is persistence. They kept on speaking to different publishers to become successful. And the basis of, of, of a strong of persistence is having willpower. Willpower simply means that you keep 
following what you want until you get the results that you want. Remember this, the hidden guide lets no one enjoy the achievement without passing through the persistent test. Persistence is what will actually give you the final goal. So there is no shortcut to, to, to success except through persistence. And persistence involves the following. You need to have a definite purpose. That means you need to have a goal that you want to achieve. The common thing all of us have in this business is the marketing plan, Neo Life as a company, but each of us has a different goal. What is your purpose? What is your goal? What is it that you want to achieve in life? The next thing that helps you in your, in your persistence journey is your intense desire. You see, there's a difference between intense desire and wishing that things will become true. Intense desire means you're willing to do everything possible for you to succeed. Okay, if you want to know an example of intense desire is a story that I had many years ago when we were starting the business. A young man went to a very successful man and he told you, he, he said, please, can you teach me how to be successful? So he asked the young man to come to his home the next day. So the next day, the young man came to his house at around uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. When he entered the house, he found, he found this uh, older man at the swimming pool. So he asked the older man, uh, okay, you told me yesterday you teach me about success. He said, yeah, just sit now next to me in the pool. So he went and sat down. So the old man jumped into the pool, took the young man and pushed him under the water. And he held his head under the water for about a minute. And this young man started struggling. He started struggling so much because he thought he was going to drown. After about a minute, this old man um, left him and he was started gasping for air. And this young, young man complained, I'm asking you to show me the, 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 the key to success and you want to kill me or drown me in the pool. So the old man told him that, look, the day you will have the desire to succeed, like the desire to have oxygen in your lungs, you're going to succeed. So ladies and gentlemen, if you really want to succeed, there has to be a really burning desire in your heart for success. The next thing about uh, uh, developing persistence, you need to have definite plans. Don't leave things to chance. If you want to build a business, you need to have a list. You need to schedule time to speak to those prospects. You need to schedule time to show the plan. You need to schedule time to follow up on, have a system of following up with the people you've shown the business. You need to have accurate knowledge about what you want, about the business, about how to prospect. And this doesn't come by accident. This comes from learning. And then you need to develop habit force and willpower. Willpower simply means that you don't give up in the things that you want to do. You see, nature is very funny and nature is neutral. Whether you're starting the business today or you've been there for 20 years, nature says that if you are persistent, you're going to succeed. If you don't persist, there'll be no success. That is simply what nature does, okay? So if you're starting the business today, if you have been in the business much longer, Remember that persistence is a sustained effort to do your business. Don't worry about the people who say, in fact, when people say no, two things should come to your mind. One, either the business is not for them or is not the right time, or two, they are not interested in the business. Go to the next person, okay? Because I, be, I truly believe that there are hundreds of people who are looking for this business. And it's up to you as a distributor to speak to these people. And if you do, success is guaranteed you. And I think one of the things that uh, really prevents us from developing uh, persistence is sometimes we're afraid of pain. I'm sure the ladies who are on this call like rose flowers. Angeline, I'm sure you like rose flowers. And uh, Magdalene and uh, Anne and Rosalind Wanja and Faith Ngaira, all the ladies who are in this call, you like rose flowers. But you see, rose is a very beautiful flower. 
But before you, you actually pluck the rose flower, sometimes a thorn pricks your finger, isn't it? I see Angelini is agreeing with me very vigorously. A woman also, before a woman gives birth, she has to go through the pain of labor. But after she's gone through the pain of labor, a child is born into the world. The joy of having a child over, or overtakes the pain of labor. If you want to taste honey, a bee will give you honey, which is very sweet, but sometimes the bee is going to sting you. What I'm saying is you need to learn the, you need to learn that in life there is joy and there is also pain. So you need to appreciate the elegant dance between sorrow and pain, between pain and joy. Those two things always go together. And if you appreciate and embrace the two, you're going to be successful. You're going to appreciate uh, what life is. You're going to embrace persistence because in persistence, you're still going to, uh, you're going to endure some pain when people tell you no, it doesn't matter. I mean, even after doing the business for 25 years, sometimes when people tell me no, when they catch me on the offside, I still feel the pain, but it does not stop me from taking to other people. Those of you who are new in the business, you are just like me. I still don't like to hear no, but I know that receiving the no leads me to the next yes. And if you are persistent, you will get the people who will help you build a large business. So ladies and gentlemen, work on your plans, get a definite purpose, be disciplined about your desires, Keep talking to people and you will develop persistence. And when you do develop pers persistence and one day you go on stage as a Ruby director, as a diamond director, you will not remember all those people who told you no. You will only remember the joy of having people in your team who believe in you, who love you, and who really appreciate that you show them the business. Paul, I want to hand over back to you. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate this session. Thanks. Thank you so much, Pascal and uh, Betty, for such an amazing training. Uh, it's, it's quite uh, encouraging, and I believe our listeners and the people on the call today, they've been able to get something that will be able to help them as they continue to build their business, our distributors on the call today. So we really appreciate your, your training, your voice counsel, and giving us direction on what we are supposed to to do so that we can remain successful. So I want to thank you. And I also want to thank the people who managed to log in today. Um, I believe that you have been able to get something. So uh, from me, Pascal and Betty, we just want to thank you for coming in and looking forward to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to have our Swahili business opportunity presentation. So if you are conversant with Swahili, make sure you log in same time. And make sure you bring in guests because tomorrow we have a special guest who is going to share their story. We have always had him speak in, in English. We have never had him speak in Swahili. And maybe we have never heard their story fully because he just touches a bit of the story. So tomorrow, Pascal Olo is our guest speaker in the Swahili presentation. So make sure you don't miss bringing guests so that we can be able to listen to Pascal tomorrow. So. From me, thank you so much. Have a lovely evening. See you soon. God bless you and bye-bye. Thank you so much, Pascal. Good night. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.